Africa's largest film industry, Nollywood, has been in the news this past few weeks for negative reasons, losing a handful of industry players to the cold hands of death. First, it was the veteran actress, Rachel Uniga, and while the world was still mourning her passage, news came that another versatile actor, Victor Lauter, had died after being bedridden for about five years. Then, it was filmmaker and director Ifan Idike. The list goes on to include comedian Stanley Okoro, Doris Chima, and Richard Oganiru, who all died within a month. This raises issues about the welfare of the actors, among other issues, including the menace of piracy, the planned film village at the Farin Rua waterfalls in Nasarawa State, among others. Joining us to look at these issues and more is Dr. Shaibu Husseini, a respected entertainment journalist and film critic. Dr. Husseini, you're welcome to the studio. Pleasure is mine. Good morning. Good to have you. Thank you so much. I mean, this is the state of Nollywood at this point in time. Uh, sad that we have to start on this note, mm. uh, but then an industry that could lose um, almost, almost eight or seven uh, of some of his big names within the space of one month uh, uh, can be said to be mourning. Um, so it looks like Nollywood is mourning, but then there's a bigger issue as to what is happening, uh, the issue of welfare uh, in, in, in the industry, in the mm. sector. I know for a fact that for, for long people have always been talking of, oh, insurance, oh, let us regulate, you know, et cetera. Where, where is Nollywood at this point in looking after its members and the welfare of those you know, that make up this thriving industry. Well, um, thank you for having me this morning. Um, it's really sad, you know, it's a terrible time for Nollywood now. And if you check all those that you had mentioned, it's only maybe Mama Rachel Oniga that did not cry out for help, mm. you know. And that's because the illness came so sudden and then she had to go on like that. So, but the others were asking for help. Some, even someone like Rick Oganiru recorded a video two days before he died asking for help bed. and other on the sick bed asking for help. And I think that it raises a lot of concern, especially when you look at the, the welfare gap, you know, mm. that you have in the industry. They don't have any structure, you know, a structure that can help, that can come in at when they have this kind of situation. And you begin to wonder why um, we have not been able to have like a, you know, a well-structured insurance scheme for the Nollywood industry 30 years after, or more than 30 years after we had this boom in the industry. Mm. And a lot of several attempts have been made by the associations, several attempts have been made by some organizations to institute a proper insurance scheme or even a health scheme for them. But I think the challenge has always been that the practitioners themselves have not been able to take these schemes very seriously. For instance, um, I know that an association like the Actors Guild of Nigeria has engaged an insurance company, you know, to provide some level of insurance, even health and even work insurance for the practitioners. But the contributory part has always been the problem. The artists do not pay into the contributory scheme. And when you ask them, they say they are living from hand to mouth. And you can, actually, you can actually tell that some of them do a job today and they don't have any other job in the next two months or three months. And then they will now go and do some other things. And by the time they get the next job, they have not paid for three months. So by the time you're asking them to pay, they will say, how much have I been paid in this job that I have to pay my premium? So the problem has been like a proper structure that we get, you know, this industry, you know, that we, that we bridge the welfare gap oh. that we have in the industry. What you have the associations doing is quickly organizing one tribute night, artist night, and all that. But there is nothing on ground to say that, oh, when somebody gets down, we can be able to rush and help. Look at the issue of Victor. You know, I mean, since 2019, mm. if not for the help of the billionaire, you know, we gave him some money, and then some of his friends on Tinsel sets, we were able to rally around. There was nothing to help him at a point. They, were, they, were, they held his body in Turkey, and the wife had to be crying out and say, look, my husband is in Turkey. They cannot allow me to access to my husband because we've not been able to pay the medical bill. And it's funny that these guys who are 
shouting 30 billion in the account. These guys who are telling you that they have, you know, who are so flashy mm. in, their, in their, you know, <laughs> will be complaining about, you know, issues about health and the rest. But I think that time has come for the industry to put down a structure that we do. It's working in the public service because there's a contributory, mandatory contribution that you have to make as a public servant. And it's taken from the source. Yeah, but public servants do oh, get actually, regular salaries. Yes, they are actually yes. employees. Yes, that's exactly. why I'm saying that we need a structure, like a union. A, we need to unionize. The industry has the, to be unionized. Yes, we need to unionize the industry so that everybody who is there knows that you have a responsibility. The union has the responsibility to pay a particular amount into the insurance Of, of your fees. Of your fees. Mm. But again, again, in Nantap, where I am a member, we were told to pay our service. Nantap is the association. Nantap is the National theater. Association of Theatre Arts Practitioners. Yes, we were told that from time to time we should pay like 5% service, um, like service charge from every work that we do. And those kind of money will come in handy when we need them. But how many people are faithful to that? So if we didn't have a system where you can deduct from source, mm. it is difficult. Some people are ignorant about the insurance scheme. Some people just feel that, oh, they don't even need the insurance scheme. But I do know that there are some of these packages that were gotten that you can just go there and do some medical checks. Some of these guys, <laughs> I really don't know. But we need a structure that will take care of this. I, I, I'm so tired that each time somebody drops, we will just be going around looking for, you know, funds, asking for help and the rest. And you know the even response. Even for the barrier. Even for the even barrier. For the barrier. The, the and you know the response that the public are beginning to do. Why are these guys asking for money? These guys make so much money. They do this, they do they're that. They're on Instagram. You know, they're on Instagram. They're influencers. They make so much money. Here and there. There's even a guy now that is asking for, for help. And somebody is telling him, oh no, you told us the other day that you bought a Lamborghini or whatever. So why don't you sell your Lamborghini and then raise stuff, you know? So we need a structure. We need a structure that we make it mandatory for them to be able to contribute to an insurance scheme so that these guys can take it. There are several that have been introduced into the industry, but the problem is always from the part of the practitioners who don't contribute to it. And mm. once you don't contribute to it, you can't gain from it. Well, it sounds like then you'd be just walking around in circles then, yeah. because firstly, the framework doesn't work for what, you, what you're proposing, because yeah. these people don't earn a, a, you know, a, a dedicated salary. You're not earning the same amount every single month. Even in any industry, many industries rather, you have freelancers, people who work when there is a job and yeah. then they don't. Yes. So, Initially, there has to be some level of individual responsibility. Yes. Yes, of course, you can call on the industry at large, but are you saying that a lot of these actors don't even have the individual capacity to look after themselves? Yes, they don't. I can say that for one. And they whose don't. fault is that? I mean, is, is that not their own? It, it's their own fault. But again, it's also the fault of the associations. The associations should impress upon them on the need for us to get these things going. There's a lot of, you know, we're talking, very soon we talk about piracy, and there's a lot of media illiteracy that is on as far as piracy is concerned. So we need to begin to get these practitioners to know that they have a responsibility to take care of themselves. How many of them take a stop and say, each time you hear them, you interview them, they will tell you, I'm, I'm doing back to back, I'm doing back to back. But <laughs> are you doing back to back and not concerned about your health? How many of them take a break? from work and say, okay, we need to take, we need to go on a short break and have like a medical check done. Looks like you've read into the future because we need to exactly. take a short break. <laughs> <laughs> back to back. <laughs> we will be going on a short break. When we come back, we will still be discussing matters with Shu Shuaibu Husseini. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still joined by Shaibu Husseini, who is a Nigerian journalist, performing artist, a cultural administrator, a film curator, a public relations and media expert. A lot of hats you wear there. A lot of hats. Thank you for staying with us. <laughs> there is a lot there. I mean, we're obviously talking about quite a, a sad situation because everybody around the world enjoys entertainment. There's a certain affinity you feel with your favorite actors or a certain film. So even with the likes of Rachel uh, Oniga, uh, you know, Lord, Bre Lord rest her soul, sadly, um, there is a lot of feeling that 
well, this is just something that happens, isn't it? So mm. what level of responsibility do you think the fans have to make sure that their favorite actors or actors in general are, are looked after? Or do you think the buck stops at, if I buy a movie or I go to the cinema, that's me doing my part? Mm. What is the relationship between the consumer of the entertainment and the entertainer themselves? Well, they also have a responsibility to draw their attention to some of the, especially some of them who are enlightened. You know, we, we find time from time to time to talk to these guys about because it's not a good thing reporting, you know, that somebody needs help. How many, how many, how many of those reports can you possibly write, you know, and all that? So as fans, too, as those who engage them on their social media handles, they can call their attention. I mean, there was a time when, you know, the icon, um, RMD, there was a time when he lost so much weight, but they didn't know what was going on at that time. Fans showed concern, a lot of concern, you know, even though the gossip press took it out of, you know, the moon and all that. But fans showed concern for him and he had to come out to say, no, I'm fine, you know, everything is okay. So we also have a responsibility as we engage them on social media. We need to call the attention to some of these facts. Some of, some of these fans are enlightened. Some of them are medical practitioners. They can engage them to and tell them. And then these artists should try and get like a management structure, you know, a lot of them operate on their own. They don't have any disciplined management structure that will advise them that it's not, it's, it's beyond engagement, but it's also taking care of yourself, looking good and being in, you know, in going concerns, so to speak. So there's a lot that has to be done by the consumers and then by the individual artists themselves. They need a management does, structure. Does this not all come down to um, what is lacking in Nollywood, which is uh, a sort of self-regulating and self-organizing scheme. Um, it looks to me like unlike the other sectors in the creative industry, the music, the literature, you know, the uh, fashion aspect, mm. uh, the visual arts, it looks like uh, the motion picture industry is a lot more fragmented mm. you know than the others there's so much too to many do. associations too many big greens and the only attempt that I do that you know I was aimed at regulating this putting everything together in one basket you know the uh, uh, Mopicon thing uh, uh, all mo 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 I'm sure you know it motion better. picture motion pictures, 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 Council. what is stalling it why is Nollywood everywhere too much noise but less of, you know, organization? Well, I think, that, I think that there's so much of ego tripping in that industry. There's so much of, you know, ownership mentality. Everybody wants to be a leader. You know, you are in an, in an association and then maybe you don't like the person who is there. Then the next thing you form a splinter association. And that's why we have so many associations. I mean, there's freedom of associations, yes. but it's better when we operate as one, you know. And that's why there has been this clamor for a long time for the Motion Picture Practitioners Council, just like you have other professions, the bar associations. They use APCON, I think. You know, yeah, as, just like you have APCON, yeah. you know, we normally, you know, say APCON, you know, are so organized. Yes. You know, you don't hear all this in, happening in the advertising industry. But each time you tell some of these practitioners about that, they will tell you, oh, APCON is a different thing. You don't, you don't need a, a collective body for the motion picture industry. But things are beginning to show now that we need a collective. I mean, will if it, we, Will it ever happen? Well, I think it will happen. It will get to a point where you will know that, where they will realize that, look, we need to get together. Because you call a meeting, you call a meeting. I mean, you call a meeting of, motion picture practitioners yeah. and you go there you see all films association of producers association of there's association of producer movie producers there's association of core nollywood producers there's association of amalgamated core nollywood <laughs> producers <laughs> so you have so many of them and they are not doing anything some of them have just like five members ten members but it is possible for us to get together into a council and the council can say okay look maybe an umbrella body, so to speak. And we have these umbrella bodies in other climes of the, of what the is, world. What is the business model of Nollywood? Because if we separate it from other types of film, it is quite a niche market in itself. How does it work? Is it that a producer would write a story 
and then they'd get funding to execute the planning of that story, pay actors, and then that's it? Or do actors have the option to say, well, if this movie sells X amount, I want this percentage? How do people actually make money within this industry? What is the business model? Oh, I only know of a few uh, instances where a producer had come to say, look, guys, we're going to shoot this movie. Um, you're, I mean, you, you, you get paid after the production has been done. You know, you get some percentage of the profit. If, like you are staking your equity, yeah. you know, in the production. Only few, you know. But the real model from when Nollywood started is that a producer gets fund, hires a director, gets every other person, you know, on board. He pays them off. They produce the movie and they go. Now we have a structure called the AVRS, or the Visual Rights Society of Nigeria. How many Nollywood practitioners are signed up to the audiovisual right? The audiovisual right is supposed to be like a collective, collecting or a, a society that will help you collect some monies that you can, you know, you earn when like you are not working. That are like royalties that are due to you mm. and all that. We don't even have a royalty system presently. I, I think the music industry has the succeeded in The music industry in doing succeeded in doing that, mm -hmm. even though now there's some fragmentation, <laughs> there's some problem there and the rest because there are two bodies that are running the same stuff yes. in the country. But for Nollywood, we, we have not even taken off with that yet. And then the business model is, I do a job, I, I pay you guys, and then you are off. Whatever money I make at the cinema or whatever channel, it's none of your business and all that. And we, 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 we need to change that model. Do Nollywood movies make it to the cinema? Yes, because yes. I, 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 I yes. associate it with, you know, pay for D, uh, DVDs and the yes. likes. And, yes. and, and now YouTube, for example, mm, yes. how does that money trickle down? Or is it more organized with, it, with a lot of Nollywood being on the Internet now? Oh, well, a lot of Nollywood on the Internet. But the money gets to the, to the producer. Mm. You know, it doesn't get, it doesn't doesn't get back to, I, you know, I actually the think that the big money is coming in now. Mm. You know, the, the, the situation that Dr. Uzaini has described you know, sadly, you know, as is what we've observed uh, 30, 30 something years, years ago, ago when the new Nigerian cinema kind of a thing started. Uh, but now the cinemas are back. The biggest film, uh, as you know, mm. um, um, highest grossing film, you know, is something, I mean, not too far away from a billion now, isn't yes, it? Yes, uh, um, get to yes. Yes. By Funke Akinele. By Funke Akinele. Yes. But I think the, 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 the serious money looks to be coming in. Maybe in trickles because with, with Netflix now playing a big role mm. in the Nigerian sector, with, with Amazon, Amazon trying in. to come, mm -hmm. how, how do you think that will better the lot of the industry? And does it have the potential to kill cinema if people stay glued to Netflix or right. Amazon to? So you I've been to the cinema in a long time. No, no, no. Actually, last time I went to the cinema no. was to watch Omar Ghetto, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, the traditional media, I mean, the traditional distribution platforms will still be there. It won't kill DVDs. It won't kill cinema. People will still want to have that experience. We'll go to cinema to watch and all that. Then people want to stay at home to watch, you know, via, you know, their laptops or their phones. We still have that to watch. It, won't, it doesn't have the because potential of killing this, cinema. Uh, Dr. Z is yes. because... At the beginning of the Nollywood thing, yep. you know, the argument was that, oh, Nigeria was not safe, uh, people didn't like to go out, mm. uh, churches and mosques had taken over the cinemas, mm. and therefore people wanted to stay at home. Mm. Now that we have the cinemas, mm. we now have another form mm. of uh, things that will make you stay at home, yeah. even, even in your car, watch, you know, yeah. on yeah. your phone. Yeah. So uh, with the sort of investments, I know bank of industry, etc., mm. you know, uh, have put into developing uh, cinema. the cinema complexes. I, I hope that they're not endangered. No, they're not. They're not at all. Cinemas will always be there. It's like saying that, you know, with digital prints, the traditional newspaper will go off and nobody will buy the traditional newspaper. Cinemas will still be there. People will still patronize the cinemas. Cinemas are struggling. I, mean, I was I mean, about to say, yeah, I mean, are. they're being printed. No, they are, but you know. But it, how many people are yeah, buying you them? You know, but for entertainment, for entertainment, it's something that people like to go out. People want to hang out. People want to. People go to cinemas for different reasons. Some of them, they just want to just have the fun, sit down in a cinema hall and all that. But cinemas will die off soon. It may, it may in the future, but <laughs> cinemas will die off. I've never had a situation, even when television came, you know, in the 50s. That's true. You know, we thought that it would kill off cinema. Radio. But cinema is still there. Let's, let's do content quickly, mm. uh, Dr. Zaini. 
Yeah, because I'll feel bad not to ask you <laughs> <laughs> about content. Mm. We now have Grammy. Yeah. Finally. You yeah. know, and not just one, you know, I mean. A few, you know, too. Absolutely. Think, yeah. For music. <laughs> you know, for music. Mm. When will the Oscar come? And I ask that not just because we need the diagram alone, mm. but I'm yeah. seeing our content, mm. which is what will bring it. Mm. How competitive are they? How, mm. you know, when you go to Berlin, to Cannes, to Fespaku, all those things, Toronto, are we really competitive? Or we're just enjoying our own thing, the things we do, and our brothers in the diaspora. You know, when will the Oscar come? The Oscars will come when our filmmakers take a deliberate step to produce content that will be competitive. Or you don't just put your films in Oscars. The films that you produce for maybe these platforms, you know, and maybe for cinema in Nigeria, may not be fit to get into the Oscars. There are some films you produce that you cannot even get onto Netflix because they have their standards. They That's have true. QC standards and yeah. all that. So if you want to put a film to in Oscars and you want us to get an Oscar to the country, then you must be deliberate about it from story conception mm. to the point of production. You must be deliberate about it. We follow the rules. Of course, you know the language issue and all that because the only category we can enter is the foreign language category. Then you follow the rules about language and then you follow the rules about making sure that your production values are high there. We shouldn't be producing. You know, a lot of us, they, Oh, people love our movies, no matter how we mm. make them. You know, that's not what happens. You see these guys in the music industry. They upped up their game. Exactly. You know, had collaborations with even, you know, the guys in the West. Yeah. And they helped them a lot. You saw the, the, lot, you saw the benefit of those collaborations. Our literature too. You know, Chimamanda. see our Absolutely. literature too. You Absolutely. Know? So the industry needs to open up. The industry needs to collaborate. And then there should be a deliberate attempt. If you are going to go for the Oscars, you... I mean, if you are going to write for, if you are going to go for the LNG prize, for instance, mm. you write and you make sure that you are going for that. <laughs> you are not writing for everyone. You are writing because you are entering into an award system that has its rules and regulations and all that. So if you are making a film just because, oh, they say it's language film and then you just want to put it and then your production values are not right. Oh, you will just be staring. We'll just be watching the Oscars right here in Nigeria, cut your eyes. <laughs> well, <laughs> we will not be able to bring it back ever because we tried I mean we tried so many the last attempt was was okay we got up to um, we got up to the nomination stages but we fell out mm. not necessarily because we didn't have the right content but that movie was the, they were very deliberate about yeah. entering for the Oscar so we need to be deliberate about the kind of films that we make so that they can be competitive mm. I mean personally yeah. I, I know we're supposed to be asking you the questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I am such a big fan. People might not know because obviously my spoken Yoruba is not strong. Mm. But I'm a very big fan of traditional Yoruba films. Mm, exactly. So you've got the likes of Tunde Kelani yeah. and all of the films that he made. Mm. And all of the actors that I remember... I don't know his actual Ogogo. Oh, I don't. I can't remember Ogogo. what he was. And likes of Femi Adebayo, who yeah. really fantastic actors yeah. who kind of reach a pinnacle here in this Nigeria and don't kind of like break out of the stratosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you look at that perspective, what mm. do you think they need to do to push through onto a global platform? It is beyond just speaking Yoruba and just mm. acting. The script has to be right. The story you are telling also has to be right. And then you have to use the right equipment and the rest. That industry, you know, they have talents, they have things there, but they need to invest more, you know, in things that will make their films go beyond borders, you know. Presently, we keep quarreling every time about the fact that they spend so much money on the production, but they can't even get a language translator to yes. work on their movies. The, uh, what do they call English subtitles. <laughs> and then you, I saw one movie it's like two days. I saw one movie like a week ago, and the guy just said, "Monje unlawo in Yoruba, Monje unlawo," and you know what they subtitle? Yeah. I am eating in the hands. <laughs> That's a joke. It's so terrible. Shame. And are, I you just said, are you serious? Yes, I'm telling you. And I said, ah, ah, I'm eating in the hand. Mojen law. So I just asked another Yoruba guy, what's the translation for Mojen law? I'm currently eating. And he just said, I mean, you know, no, it's so terrible. You see some of those subtitles and the rest. So they need to invest in the production values. It's good. I mean, I, I see that we may get our first Oscars if we really invest in producing a strong Yoruba movie or a language film, you know, but we are careful about the camera we use. We are careful about the script. Here in the industry, there are some filmmakers who shoot with the first draft. I've never heard where somebody, like, 
you commission. What, what, what does that mean? The first draft oh, is you. Script. Somebody tells you he has a story, or you had a story and you told someone, and then the person writes a script and gives it gives to you. You have not done any due diligence on the script, and then just from that first draft, you begin to cast. The next thing you get on location and you shoot. Is that not the quack quack quack? That, hey, uh, but, we cannot do, but we cannot do quack 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 and bring us cars. You can't yeah. do those guys who make movies and get us to go to cinema and shout wow wow. They don't do quack 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 kind of filmmaking. They don't. If you want to play in quack 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 space, go play in quack 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 space and continue to be a king of quack quack quack. That's correct. <laughs> but if you want to play globally, and the money now is global. It's not non local. I mean, we have conquered Nigeria. We have had all the Nairas. But yeah. if we want to get global, then Absolutely. we must play according to standards. And there is no Nigerian standard. I mean, <laughs> Steve and I, you know, we are on an award platform. And we finished the award. And one filmmaker came to us and said, ah, African Movie Academy Award, and said, how come you people are judging us against other African countries? We should have a Nigerian rule and standard. There is no Nigerian rule for filmmaking, mm -hmm. just as there is no Nigerian rule for journalism and the rest. These Absolutely. things are standard. Absolutely. So you have to play according to those standards. Once we are deliberate about what we do in filmmaking, and I must commend quite a number of people who are beginning to get you know, get out of that crowd of... Which, bah, is, bah, bah. which is where I'm going. You know, <laughs> to say, let us at least celebrate a right. few. Yeah. You know, not yeah. only in terms of the content that they bring out, yeah. but also in terms of their their business models. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, look at what Moabudu, Moabudu has done with Ebony was, Life. Yeah. Look at what Konle Afolayo is, is doing. about to launch at the He's end of the month doing. With, with the uh, KP Hub. Yeah. You know, and there are a few... Names like that yeah. that are not doing badly at yeah. all. They deserve yeah. to be celebrated. They deserve. At least. I if, mean, look if at it's a model like... that is working. Yes. Is this something that others can say rather than Belier can, you know, uh, be angry? At it? Is this something that you can study and say, well, this is also coming out of Nollywood. It may not be much, but then this is this should be a standard that we should at least emulate, isn't you, it? You see, most of the guys you mentioned, most mm -hmm. of the people you mentioned, King Mo, Kulia for Lion, um, uh, Tunde Kelani. Yeah, people believe in collaboration. They do a lot of collaborative work. I used to give an example when I teach students. I told them that collaboration is the only thing that can get this industry going. There's a film, Wedding Party. Before Omogeto, it was the highest grossing Nigerian film at the cinemas. That's a more film, the it? Yes, the first part and the second, the first part, I think, was a product of collaboration. Four production companies, each with its competence, came together. Ebony Life, production outfit. They are very good in production and all that. Uh, film, one. film one. They are distributors. They are marketers. Uh, ink blocks. They are into production services and all that. And then Koga Entertainment, one company that has some of the best equipment that you had. Four of them came together and produced that blockbuster and all that. But in industry, we don't collaborate much. We don't do. We just we are solo. We like playing solo My thing. and all that. My, My thing. I mean, look at uh, Kunle's collaboration with the scriptwriter. The guy who writes the regular script for Kunle, Tudri Baalala, for instance. Look at other people collaborating. Until we begin to collaborate, until we begin. Mo, I, Mo, 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 Mo has done a lot of collaboration. Once Mo knows that you have what it takes, Mo will get you to come and work with her. She's not a. I mean, look at Kenny Yang with the lottery. Uh, look at. Um, our, our man who shot 50 is even working on another production for her now. Uh, uh, B. B. Bandele. Yeah. Bandele. Yeah, B. Bandele, who shot 50. She has worked with the best in the industry. And we need to collaborate. If we don't collaborate, we will just be there playing lone kings, you know, in an industry that we are supposed to be, you know, we are supposed to produce major, major stars and major, Chabu, and get big Chabu, money. What has happened to the promise from the federal government mm -hmm. regarding the committee headed by uh, Alibaba? You know, which had a lot of industry people in it. Mm. Nollywood had, you know, the most number of people. The post-pandemic relief package. Mm. Nigeria is about the only major country of the world that has not done anything in terms of, you know, from the federal mm. to assist this sector. Mm. Uh, I believe that something was packaged. A yes. number of people were in that committee, yes. but yes. Alias and Peters, yes. you know, everybody. Mm. What is going on? Well, is I, it dead as always? As, no, as, I, I doubt <laughs> whether it is dead. But I also know that after Alibaba committee submitted their report, there was another committee that looked at the report headed by Otumba Shebuwe. They looked true. at the report to break down the report into actionables, you know, for government, <laughs> so to speak. And that report, I think, has been submitted 
to government. And then we are hoping that we are still in the era, you know, we're not going past the era. So sounds sounds like still. a government thing. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> the era. So we are hoping that, you know, government will do the action. But government needs to support the industry because the industry lost so much during the pandemic. I know what South Africa did. South Africa did massively for their practitioners. There were some people who were on location at that time. Somebody like Emmy Song, she had started working, in, in, got a lot of guys into the country and all that. And all of a sudden, they said the production cannot go on again because there was a lockdown. She had to pay off people and the wow. people left and wow. the production was not completed. Somebody like that should get some kind of you know, assistance. assistance. Otherwise, yeah. the person gets out of the industry because there is no support. Yeah. You know, it's not our fault that the lockdown came and all that. So we think that, you know, government needs to go back to that actionables, mm. you know, that were recommended by the Otumba Way Committee, and then government should see how they can support the industry. I also know that at the point, Netflix was also trying to do something for people who were working on their own productions, you know. They issued out, like, a a note for you to complete and then you return and all that. So beyond government, other institutions too, you know. I know that's a billion naira from the Lagos State government. State government, you know. Uh -huh. but, but it hasn't been accessed. Yes. Uh, is, it, is it too difficult for, because I know that between 30 and 40 million, mm. you know, sort of uh, assistance, mm. you know. I think some people, some people complained about the process of assessing mm. the funds and the things they were demanding you know, from them, from assessing the funds and all that, tax issues and the rest. And that's another area in that <laughs> industry. A lot of tax evaders in that industry. A lot of people don't pay they're, tax. They're not tax compliant. That, no, they are not tax compliant. A lot it, of them. It, it makes it difficult for you to access. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because without that, you, you know, cannot access. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, I remember once when there was this Project Nollywood Fund, and yes. Project Nollywood Fund, and you had to... You had to assess the money. But one of the conditions is that you must have a registered company and then you must be task compliant up to date. A lot of people lost out mm. because some of because those, their companies are just in their briefcases. Before we let you go, mm. could you tell us what your favorite Nollywood film is? Of all time? Yes. Because we've spoken so much about poor production value or not thinking about the end goal from inception. Name one Nollywood movie that you believe ticks all boxes that didn't get the justice it was supposed to do. I'll ask you too, Steve. The hey. two of you might go on. This is a very this is a very tough one. <laughs> this is a very tough one. This is a very really, really tough one for me because there are quite a number of movies that I would say, okay, yeah, this movies worked for me. But I will always go back to Kelani's Ionimo Fair. I like the movie so much. And then another one that I must go back to, please permit me, let me <laughs> add the second one, is the production that was done by Adebayo Salami's company. Uh, it was done on 16mm uh, film. film. Uh, it was done on 16mm at that time. And I even recently asked him to let us have a, a remake. That film I saw in Joss, in a cinema in Joss, and I couldn't leave the seat you know, in cinema, when I saw the film. Uh, I'm, I can't remember the title now, but it has this beautiful song that I sing every time. It's my first Yoruba song that I learned, okay. you know, and all that. Uh, if you permit me, I think if I... Please Omo go Rukon, The title is Omo, Omo Orukon. Orukon. That film <laughs> is my best film ever. In, and I'm begging them to remake the film, you know, and all that. It's a, I sat down after the film, and I couldn't leave the cinema until I read the last credit. And that's what everybody should actually do mm. now. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Pedro Gumola. Yes, Pedro Gumola. Yes. You know, the one that he says he saw a snake and then he thought it was... You no, know, he saw a human being. You no, know, he saw a snake and thought that it was a snake. And then later, you know, like we always do, then it was a human being that appeared at the end. And then he went to jail and all that. That's a very fantastic film for me. Oh. Omo Rukong. Mm. And, you know, we've gone... We've gone we don't make those kind of films again. And that's because at that time, I was told that that film was shot exclusively in some, in some areas that were designated at that time as production lots, you know, like film village that yeah. we're talking about and all that. But now we don't have those lots again. So once you go to shoot a movie anywhere, in fact, somebody was telling us that he shot a bedroom scene uh, in four houses because they were chasing them from one location 
to the other. They, they got the guy's house to shoot, and they got the consent of the wife. But by the time the husband came and found them and said, what are they doing in his house? He chased them out. <laughs> so they had to move the scene to another scene. And that calls for a production lot. We need a film village. It is very important for the industry. And thankfully, I heard just last week that Lagos is planning a film city. Something, something called like, like a film village. In Equer, yes. You know, they even had like 10, uh, is it 1,000 or 100 hectares of land for the project. If we have a film lot where we can do our films from beginning, from script to uh, post-production, then things will begin to get better for the industry. All right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I will have to hold my... I know. Well, you'll tell me during the break. You'll tell me during the break. No problem. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Shaibu. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us on the morning show.